But what the marketing corporate is about is strategy. Use social media and stop letting it use you. That's one thing about a business. It's an equalizer. It's a game changer. We have to think like the successful companies. Welcome to the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. We're not saving souls. We're saving businesses, saving jobs, saving our community. Now, if I save a soul along the way, don't hold that against me. We'll just call that icing on the cake because the mission here is to build strong businesses in our community so we can put our people to work. And we do that with business development, job creation, and service. If you ever find yourself at a business crossroads and not sure which way to turn, hey, just turn on the Marketing Pulpit Show. How hard can that be? Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, we're back on the air. We're doing a one o'clock version of the show today. This is our Mother's Day edition. This is Mother's Day weekend. We were on earlier. We had a little technical difficulty, but we're back and we're back and we are here in force on the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and I am a business developer by trade. I have a company called Gatewood Marketing and Web. I'm also a uh, Consultant for the Small Business Administration. I help companies in the 8A program. Uh, I'm also an author, written two books, one called Played in Full and the other Smarter Than the Boss. And I'm also an adjunct professor at Prince George's Community College, where I teach uh, marketing, networking, and social media here in the Washington, D.C. area. So, hey, got a couple of receipts, got a couple of receipts. Anyway, it's not about that. It's about building this foundation so we can have this economic viability in our community. So I'm on a mission. I have a raison d'etre, a reason for being. Thank you for calling the show. And thank you also for tuning in on this Mother's Day weekend. That's right. Monday, I mean, this coming Sunday, May 8th, we'll be celebrating Mother's Day. So I want to do a shout out and celebrate all of the mothers out there, all of you who have uh, done the motherly thing and helped bring these kids into the world and show them the right, put them on the right and narrow and I understand it's not an easy task. So to all the mothers, I really appreciate you. And we want to dedicate this show to you, this version of the Marketing Pulpit Show. Because it's not, we know, whether you're a mother or if you're by choice or by circumstance, you are a woman and you were not able to have children, but you have also stepped in and helped raise some of these children out here. Sometimes you go by these various names of, Nana and Auntie and Godmother and Play Mom and all the different nomenclatures, whatever. We appreciate you. And just know that we have your work has not gone unnoticed. So thank you to all of the mothers out there. Sometimes I know you don't feel the love, but just know the love is there. And so we're also celebrating Teachers Appreciation Week from May 1st to May 7th. So that's celebrated every uh may and so to teachers that's another group man that's a, that's a tough job to be in right now i mean people are they don't get the love they need I mean, you got to teach these kids you got to teach you got kids in front of you you got another group of kids working from home they're not halfway paying attention you still got to grade them you're holding them against this new standard so teachers once again thank you for all your uh, hard work and we appreciate you. And this is also Nurses Day, <laughs> Nurses Appreciation Day. All my favorite people today are being celebrated. The mothers, the uh, teachers, and the nurses. So we celebrate all of you. Thank you for what you do. And just know that it is it does not go unnoticed. What else is going on here? We also um, celebrating some other observances. It's National Mental Health Month. So anybody who's having uh, challenges or know someone, sometimes the family members are the ones that's bearing a lot of the brunt, dealing with people who have mental challenges. Um, National Inventors Month and National Family Month. So we have quite a few observances today. We have to be curious, curious about what's going on here. Speaking of curiosity, there is a saying that says, curiosity killed the cat. You ever heard that saying? Curiosity kills the cat. Now, what that says is that you have to watch how curious you are. Sometimes being too curious 
put you in danger or at risk for, I guess, being too uh, investigatory. But when you think about it, if you're a bad cat, you wouldn't want people to be curious either. Because some of these cats out here, and I'm sure this is speaking colloquially, they deserve to be, it's not necessarily killed because I don't want the PETA folks coming at me. They at least need to be marginalized because there are certain, let's say this cat takes on a certain countenance. Sometimes it takes on the countenance of injustice. Sometimes it takes on the countenance of prejudice. Sometimes it takes on the countenance of apathy. Sometimes it takes on the countenance of myopia. Sometimes we're seeing the rise of some of our worst instincts. And we have every right and obligation to be curious and not let some of these things go unchallenged. So yes, curiosity does kill a cat. But if you're the wrong kind of cat, and I do speak uh, in, in colloquialism, then you deserve to be put aside. Because we need to be curious about what's going on in the boardrooms across the country. We need to be curious about what's going on in the school boards. We should be curious about what's going on in the state houses across the country, in Congress, in our churches, in our corporations, in the boardrooms. We need to be curious about what kind of decisions are being made in these TV sets, these producers and directors, what they're, what they're deciding to put in front of our children. So yes, curiosity does kill the cat, but some cats need to be dealt with because the fat cats, the bad cats, they depend on us being soaked in ignorance for them to do their dirty deeds. So I say, let's show them we are curious. And sometimes that curiosity either puts them in place or can be at their undoing. So thank you again for tuning in to the show today. This is the Marketing Pool Pit Show. Got a lot going on today. As a matter of fact, this past week, I was up in uh, New York. Man, if you've ever gone to New York, <laughs> you should know. <laughs> That's not exactly the place you want to go drive. I decided to drive instead of uh, catching the train or the plane, even though I was warned and admonished that it would be, um, <laughs> wouldn't be the most pleasant experience. And they were right. <laughs> I should have driven. But the reason I was up there, one of my clients, um, matter of fact, Joe Madison, he's known as the Black Eagle. He has a show on Sirius XM. He put out a new book called Radioactive. And I was up there. He's one of my clients. I was up there helping him promote the book. We went to the uh, Sirius uh, XM headquarters over in Manhattan, New York. And I was fortunate enough, even though I drove up there, I was fortunate enough that my hotel room was only about a few blocks from Sirius XM headquarters. Uh, but Joe is, um, he's been a great client. He has uh, a wonderful audience. He's doing great things in the community. Uh, he has his signature uh, slogan, what are you going to do about it? And so I admire uh, anybody who's looking for some guidance on what they need to do and how to be inspired, then you might want to pick up a copy of the book, Radioactive by Joe Madison, the Black Eagle. Also, we are celebrating Mother's Day today. Kind of reminds me of my own mom. She passed away last year and really right around Mother's Day. And so this is really the first year where I'm really feeling the impact of her not being here during this time. Uh, so I want to really dedicate the show to her. And she was, man, we don't get to pick our mothers, but if I had a choice, I would pick her every time. She had 14 children. Uh, she was a wonderful wife to my dad, Reverend W. H.K. Wood. Um, she was the one who kind of sent me on my way when I decided to leave the nest and come to Washington, D.C. area. She was one of the few people that I told that I was heading north. She gave me, she gave me the keys of her car and $20. <laughs> Fortunately, there was a company that had hired me and had provided uh, lodging and uh, a stipend to get started, but it was my mom that gave me that little push. She knew I was a little different. I was not a one to hang around. So thank you again, mom, for everything that you did for me and my siblings and to all the mothers out there. Uh, thank you. You set a good, a high bar for motherhood. And thank you for being the mother that you were. Continue to inspire us in your absence. 
Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of the things in the news, and it's quite a bit. We have the Supreme Court. We have the stock market. We have Elon Musk. We have all kinds of people trying to get to work. So we're going to take a quick break. This is the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m., bringing you the good marketing gospel. And I want to say good morning to Adrian. Thank you for tuning in to the Marketing Pulpit Show. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a moment. This is the Marketing Pulpit, and we'll be back in a second. <laughs> I'm not busy. I'm just in another era. Lock the refrigerator door. Do not let negativity have another bite. Don't feed it. If we know that women are carrying the burden, they should be paid more. They should be given more flexible work hours. I may stop in some period, but as long as folks are the food, got to talk about it. can make money while you sleep. It may be an oversimplification in some instances and not so much in others. When we're talking about passive income and making money while you sleep, like most things in life, all things are not created equally. There's some you can make while you totally asleep. You can sleep for a week or two and not even worry about it. Others, you might be jumping up in the middle of the night because things are happening you have to attend to. So you might your sleep may be interrupted. Some you got to do a little work on, some you got to do a lot of work on. So a lot of things have been thrown into that passive income basket. But I do like that concept that um, when I can, I'm laying in the bed at night and I'm making money, that it doesn't mean that I didn't do some work before I lay down. So there are varying degrees of passive income. Welcome back to the show. This is Robert Gatewood. I'm here on the Marketing Pulpit Show. We're here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. Bring you, bring you the good marketing gospel today. We're broadcasting at 1 p.m. because we had uh, an earlier attempt to do the show. Ran into a difficulty, but we are back. We are back. Now, later in the show, we're going to talk about our sermon today on franchising. Should you buy a franchise if you're thinking about getting into the business arena? Or should you start a business from scratch, from startup? That's a question I get off, get asked often. People say, hey, did it just cost too much money to buy a franchise? Well, really? Well, it may surprise you. The answer may surprise you. So you want to stick around for that coming up in the um, in the last uh, 15 minutes of the show. Uh, we're also going to have our uh, war in the workplace. People are still acting the absolute fool out here. It seems like they're getting worse. I thought once the pandemic had abated somewhat, that people might come back to their civil, <laughs> we may see a little more civility coming back, but not yet. I said I was going to continue to do this, uh, going to do this segment until people started acting right. Well, might have a ways to go, ladies and gentlemen, so hang on for that. But first, we're going to talk about some of the traditional business news. Um, and this first item falls onto kind of business type politics, kind of justice. The Supreme Court, what's up with that? The Supreme Court has decided somehow that need, they need to go back and start revisiting what we thought were some settled issues, including our woman's right to shoes. Didn't we all think that was pretty much a done deal? It's been 50 years. Well, all of a sudden, um, Chief Justice Alito, he does this brief and get the cat gets out of the bag that we find out about six of the 
justices have pretty much signed on to this concept that they are planning to overturn Roe v. Wade, which was a landmark decision passed about 50 years ago to give the woman the right to choose. Now, there's a difference between pro-abortion and the right to choose. A right to choose is really a woman's fundamental right. She has the right to decide what she does with her body. And it's amazing that the people that seem to have the biggest issue with this are certain men. That alone should be suspect. They say, oh, what about the, the poor? Uh, they're all about life. They're, the, they're all about the sanctity of life. These same folks who are so into this sanctity of life seem to have little regard to life when we flooding our streets with weapons and guns. Not so concerned about life when it comes to health insurance that would really almost at least guarantee you a better, healthier life. They're not so concerned about life when it comes to better pay, which give you quality of life, give you better choices of food, health and housing that can extend your life. So this, this whole thing about Roe v. Wade and his right to choose is just a smoke screen. It's, it's hypocrisy. It's steeped in hypocrisy. And we shouldn't fall for it. Once they start taking away the women's rights, who's next? Is uh, Board Brown versus Board of Education next? Anyway, folks, that's we got to watch that. We talked about curiosity killing the cat, but it's one of these cats that we should be curious about and we should put it to rest. This, uh, this hypocrisy, this oh my goodness. Anyway, we'll keep an eye on that. Also, in the news, business small businesses are suffering during this hiring crunch. We know that there's a shortage of workers right now, but. This has been particularly precarious for small businesses. One, small businesses, they get paid the same pay that Amazon and Google and Home Depot and some of these big companies can pay. And they also don't have the technology. So it's put, really putting a crunch on these small companies. Now, one thing I will say that to small companies, you really got to invest in your infrastructure, including technology, because some of these uh, Personnel issues can be, let's see, mitigated. Some of these challenges can be mitigated by investing in technology. You go into an Amazon warehouse, they got robots doing everything. And uh, so as small companies, of course, it goes back to one of my fun, fundamental uh, discussions is that, are you ready to start a business in today's environment? It's more than just saying, look, I can cook a good cake, so let me go out here and throw up my shingle and start saying I'm in business. I mean, there are uh, barriers to entry. There's supply chain issues. There's uh, privacy and trademark and intellectual property issues. I've done whole and complete shows on barriers to entry to starting a business. And we're, we're starting to uh, realize and some of these uh, discrepancies are being exacerbated during this pandemic and lockdown and some, the ability to hire and keep people employed is another one so you may have to look at some of your uh, expenses you have to look at your location needs what can you do virtually what services can you eliminate that's causing that's uh, not profitable do a, what we call a contribution margin based on certain services instead of your entire operation so there are ways to combat this and at least give it some thought uh, than just rolling over. But yes, small businesses are feeling the crunch right now. Uh, Apple workers have slammed this RTO policy that's returned to the office. They say it's hypocritical and they don't want it. They really don't want to go back. I mean, come on now. Of course, people are going to make up all kinds of reasons they don't want to go back and give it some pretty good sound bites. But man, let me tell you, Somebody who's in corporate America for 25 years, somebody who's been in his own company another 20 years, 20, almost 25 years. And I've seen and been in the pandemic for the last two years. Let me tell you something, folks. That's a tough, that's a tough sale to get somebody to go back to the office if they don't have to. 
man, in the old days, I'm jumping up. I got the alarm clock set, I'm racing out the door. I'm in the traffic. Can't even stop and get a cup of coffee. You weighing, you judging. You said, man, if I stop, get this coffee, I might not get there in the five minutes that I need to be there before the bell rings. And man, you get up now. It's like you, you don't even set the alarm clock. And hell, I, I get up when I get up. <laughs> you take a long breath. Of it. You're not just having coffee and a donut, man. You frying eggs and sausage and grits and toast, waffles, and the whole works. And it's hard to give that up. And so people, of course, they're going to justify it by other means. They look, hey, we can't, we can't go back because you're going back with it. Man, let me tell you, we just don't want to go back to where we were. I'm telling you, it's, it's working. It's working from home stuff. Man, that stuff is, that is too good. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm loving it. I don't know if I could go back. I'm sorry. And that's probably why we're having these shortages too. People have been asked. People are being asked to come back. They don't want to come back. Can you blame them? <laughs> no. Cannot. Let's see. No, New York City cases of COVID hit a three-month high. Wait a minute. I was just in New York. <laughs> no, don't joke, Robert. Don't joke. No, I did. I did my quarantine when I came back. I was not around people. I wore my mask the entire time. And I still keep my mask. I mean, let me tell you something. Where's my mask? See that mask there? Got the, got the marketing pulpit brand on it. Man, I'm into this branding thing. I got marketing pull up on everything, on everything around me. Oh, hey, have some, have some water. But I was just in New York, and but they're saying it's had the highest count of COVID in the, since the last since January. Ten thousand new cases. Where's that coming from? Didn't you all think this thing was over? Hmm. Well, we did pass a million deaths since this COVID has started. Those are not good numbers. Not good numbers. But anyway, folks, just I know. Restaurants are open back up. Comedy shows are open. Basketball games. Your office, your job. You got to protect yourself, though. I know you go into that meeting, you're the only one with a mask on, and you're feeling like you're feeling that social proof to take the mask off. I know it's it's very difficult. It is. I mean, I've been in that situation recently where everybody around me was maskless. And I'm sitting there feeling like I, I was ostracized. I kept my mask on. I don't know y'all. <laughs> They're gonna give me COVID. Uh, plus, I tell you, here's a good here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a, uh, a way out. Tell people that you are allergic. You, you're allergic to pollen. There you go. Because before the before the uh, pandemic hit. In places like Japan and China, they were wearing masks before COVID-19. That's right, because of pollen and pollution. So if you if you start to feel bad and you feel like people think you're overreacting to uh, COVID, then you can always say, hey, look, <laughs> uh, I'm allergic to pollen. Brother Brown said, is it live or is it Memorex? Mr. Brown, we are actually live. We came on there earlier today. We had some audio issues. And so we uh we just went ahead and closed down the show. So we said we'll come back at one o'clock and we are back live. We'll be back at regular time next week. So the folks at one o'clock who are not accustomed to tuning in, we're throwing you a little treat today. And you may join us on 1030 going forward. People like Adrian who are new to the show, and yeah. We are live. We are live. Thank you for tuning in, Brother Brown, the greatest plumber in town. Let's see here. Elon Musk, man, Elon Musk is he's quite a character. He's an interesting character. Well, he's talking about what well, he's, you know, he made this bid to buy Twitter for about $44 billion. That's a lot of money. It was not millions, ladies and gentlemen. Billions now, just a million. What's that? What's that? Billion is the new million? What is it? A billion is the new million. Yeah. I never thought I'd see a number like $44 billion. <laughs> People just sitting on $44 billion. In the old days, once you became a billionaire, you were in a uh, uh, an exclusive club. It's like, man, you got rappers and basketball players and uh, talk show hosts. All kind of folks <laughs> are being as now. Uh, guys going to moon and spaceships and tech people. But anyway, he's, he's, he's he got this offer on the deal to buy Twitter. 
He put up four. He's offering fifty-four point two. No, about forty-four billion at about fifty-four dollars and twenty cents a share. He planned to finance it with uh, about twenty-five billion in debt, and he's going to take a loan against his Tesla stock. I right, don't mess with that Tesla stock now. That gun. I put a lot of money in Tesla. You know, you you start all that. Also, asking yourself, what if this guy is a end up being a, a, a total cuckoo? Do you still invest in his company? Do you still own his stock? So I'm watching that now on Twitter and uh, Tesla stock. So come on, Elon, don't don't go crazy on it, man. We, I mean, you, you get a lot of bad press. So I'm hoping you will kind of. I mean, you don't have to become believe everything I believe, but at, at the very minimum, can you just keep it in the middle of the road? Don't go off the the deep end, like a lot of people are fearing you may do. Any guy gets billion dollars, man. I'm, I'm still, I'm looking at him a little sad. At of course, Dow, the stock market had its worst day yesterday since 2020. Man, is anything normal anymore? <laughs> God, give me some normalcy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back talking about war in the workplace. Man, you're not going to believe these stories. Oh my goodness. Oh, man, people walking out on the wings of airplanes and pouring grease on people at the restaurant. And All right, anyway, hang on for a second, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host. We'll be back in a moment. Don't go anywhere. And we're going to be talking about later in the show, should you buy a franchise or should you start your business from scratch? That's a good question. I'm going to have a, at least, I may not have the answer, but I can at least give you some information and help you decide so don't go anywhere. This is the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gate with your host. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> I'm not dizzy. I'm just in another era. Lock the refrigerator door. Do not let negativity have another bite. Don't feed it. If we know that women are carrying the burden, they should be paid more. They should be given more flexible work hours. I may stop at some period, but as long as folks are the food, got to talk about it. You will not get rich overnight. <laughs> There's some things that can get you some fame and fortune in a short period of time, but it's not very likely. But even these overnight sensations, sometimes it's about 30 years in the making, but it was overnight to you because you just found out about it. You can go out here tomorrow, you can become an NBA star. You can go out here and make a rap song you can hit the lottery. All of these things are possible and doable, but are they likely? Not so much. So you have to decide whether you're going to spend your time, your energy, your resources chasing that wing in a prayer. Or do you spend this time and do it the old-fashioned way? Can you get successful in a short period of time? Yes. You do have to take some risk. All right, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. We are back live here on the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gate with your host, and we are here every Friday, generally at 10.30 p.m., bringing you the good marketing gospel. Today, we're here at 1 o'clock. Right now, it's 1.30, and... Uh, had, we're doing a, a redo from this morning. I was talking up a storm, man, but nobody could hear me. I, kept, I noticed everybody was kind of quiet over there. <laughs> and then finally, a couple of folks said, no audio, no audio. So we got that fixed, so we're back today. And I, I, I could have waited till next week, but man, this is Mother's Day. I have to say, congratulations and celebrate these mothers. Wonderful mothers out here. So this show is committed, dedicated to you and all of your contributions hard work and sacrifice. Thank you, mothers. Thank you, mothers. Let's talk about this war in the workplace. People out here acting fool. A Virgin Atlantic flight had to turn around in midair because one of the pilots was found not to have completed their training. Wait a minute. Is this the kind of thing you find out in the middle of the flight? <laughs> 
seems like to me you kind of find this out like a week leading up to the flight or at the check-in counter or do they have a little button or something they can stick on your on your forehead this story is very funny it's a very i'm very suspicious of this story the airline said the pilot was qualified but he hadn't complied with their own rules hmm i don't know about that ladies and gentlemen well, let's see here. Well, the Will Smith Will Smith slap that was heard around the world is starting to bear additional fruit. Dave Chappelle was was giving a uh, performance recently, and this rapper that's kind of weird. This rapper rushed the stage with a fake gun with a knife in it and tackled the comedian on the stage, and of course. Everybody's drawing the parallel between what happened with uh, Chris Rock and Will Smith. Even Chris Rock, who has actually performed that show at the same show, rushed to the stage also to, I guess, console or assist Mr. Chappelle. And he grabbed the mic and said, "Was that Will Smith?" <laughs> that was pretty. That was a pretty. That was a tough blow. Um, of course, Howard Stern, who's never been one to mince words he said hollywood should be ashamed of itself he's saying this rapper who who rushed the stage and tackled dave Chappelle, they really gave him a good a good beating and stomping him they stomped the guy broke his arm and gave him a black eye well howard certainly said that should have happened to will smith he said not only did they not attack will smith or accost him after he attacked uh chris rock they gave him a standing ovation and gave him an award. So Howard Stern is no fan of Will Smith's slapping and the treatment that he received from Hollywood. He said it's a, he said they're very hypocritical. I think there's probably some truth to that. Um, I'm not sure they should have beat up Will Smith, but I I do think that um, it is kind of strange that he went on to get his award. At the very minimum, I think he could have said, "Look." We're going to decide later on what to do with you, but right now, let's, uh, let's in case you got any more <laughs> frustration in you, uh, let's, let's, let's kind of remove you from the place for right now. Let's see, a passenger was taken into custody after walking out of the emergency landing onto the wing of a plane. I didn't know you could do that. We're talking about precedent now. We're talking about the precedent that Will Smith did when he slapped Chris Rock. Now, is this going to be a new precedent? Because I tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen, I never it never occurred to me to walk out the plane door and walk out there on the wing and take a look around. But now that I know it's possible, <laughs> I will be thinking it when I'm sitting near the, the door. I'll be thinking, huh, I wonder what happened if I just walk out there. Now, of course, the plane wasn't in full flight. It was in the, it was on the runway. And he slid off the wing into the onto the airfield. It was on a United flight 2478 coming from San Diego. Of course, the uh they put him in custody and charges are pending. As they will, as well they should be. Let's keep this mute news going here. A Kansas family cries foul after a local domino pizza delivery seat called their daughter fat. Should I do this story? I'm going to pass on this one. The receipt on the, the lady ordered online, the receipt somehow said delivered to the fat to the fat girl in the house. Uh, not worth my time today. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. Nordstrom, which has been one of my favorite companies when it came to customer service. I tell you, when I came to the D.C. area, I was a North. Man, they, they got me early because what happened? I heard all around town that Nostin would take your shoes back after you wore them for a year. <laughs> well, hey, what's not to like about that, right? I mean, I didn't wear my shoes for a year, but I thought that was a pretty good reputation. That was a pretty good acclamation to make. And so I, I've been carrying this around in my head forever, that if I ever have to wear out my shoes for a year, I can take them back to Nostin. Well, Nostin took a hit on their brand this past week where an employee diverted $10,000 in online orders to her home. 
Come on, come on, Keisha. I mean, that was actually a real name. Um, Ten thousand dollars worth of orders, according to the report, in the Charlotte Mecklenburg area. Hey, that's down around my neck of the woods. Come on, Keisha, don't do that. Young people, I know she was young. You cannot get away. You can't beat this technology. So this is our responsibility as adults, as the grown-ups. We have to tell these young people. I know sometimes you be you might be just sitting in the room there. They were there playing Nintendo and on FaceTime and tweeting and TikToking. You just have to walk over to them and break up the TikTok for a minute. Say, look here, Keisha. I know this may sound totally out of, the, out of the left field, totally irrelevant, has nothing to do with anything. But don't divert orders from your job to come to your house. And she's going to look at you or he's going to look at you like, what's wrong with you? I wasn't thinking that. Well, you plant that seed. Hopefully they won't think it. So these young folks, I'm telling you, like the next one, a KFC employee arrested for allegedly stealing credit card information from the customers. Once again, Markervia, oh my goodness, uh, Little McCurbia, I know you're over here about to go on your date or you're about to go out here and meet with your friends. Before you go, I know this, folks, this sounds gratuitous. It sounds uh, condescending, but you have to take a more proactive role. These young folks, I really don't think they get it. I'm not picking on young folks because some of these older adults are doing some of this crazy stuff too. But sometimes I'll just be in the room with folks. I'm saying, man, this is an opportunity for me to probably save somebody from one of these stories. So they won't be, Robert Gatewood won't be talking about them doing war in the workplace. Just I just throw it out there. Man, you see what happened? Folks, you know what? You cannot beat this technology. There's a camera everywhere. And there's an electronic paper trail for everything you do online. From your Facebook account, from your Google searches, your phone. You can't win. Don't even try it. So I'll be throwing this stuff out, folks looking at me like I'm crazy. This old dude talking about it. Like, I'm just hoping that I can save one person. <laughs> so I'm telling you, adults, join me in this crusade. Please, please. Woo, Lord have mercy. Mr. Brown said, good, that guy that was on the plane and getting sucked into the engine. I agree, Mr. Brown. The guy was lucky. I didn't walk on the engine of an airplane in the wing. What in the world wrong with people? Of course, delayed it. The old KFC. She's going to do a little time, or at least she'll be charged again. Wait a minute. Local mail character, a local, local mail carrier, carrier charged with stealing credit cards. Hmm. In Ohio, the mail carrier. She takes this person's mail. And then when the person ordered a replacement card, this mail carrier grabbed the card and went on a spending spree. She admitted to the theft. Once again, you can't get away. They're going to get you. You're not smarter than this technology. I know some of y'all think you're pretty smart, but that's one thing. I think that's, what, that's sometimes what gives me hope about society. I think the, 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 the folks who are not wrapped too tight, they're just going to do themselves in. They're going to self-destruct, as it seems here. In each case, the bottom line was the person has been charged, fell in their theft. Now they got a criminal record. They're going to be in prison or they can't get a job now. Let's help these folks. Let's put it out in the atmosphere as many ways as we can. You're not going to get away. All right, I'm saying it on this show. You can share this show if you don't want to tell them yourself. Go to this little section right here at the 140 mark. Say, listen to this. <laughs> listen to this, Keisha, Markevia, whatever your name is. Don't do it. And tell your little friends not to do it. They're going to get caught. What else is going on? Oh, this next story breaks my heart. I don't know if you all have ever heard about BBL. I keep hearing these stories. It's, 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 it's really 
BBL is an acronym for Brazilian butt lift. It's a form of plastic surgery where they take fat from some other part of your body or silicone or something else and inject it in your backside. Now, I may be oversimplifying it, but I think that's that's pretty much the gist of it. Well, this lady, Shakir Terry, she went down to the DR, Dominican Republic, because a lot of these, these surgeries are kind of either they're risky here or they're too expensive. So people figure they're going to beat the system. So they jump on a plane, take a little, little vacation, and go down to the DR and get their surgery done. And it's supposed to be giving you a, a sculptured, I guess, derriere, for lack of a better term, or a nice shape. But too many times these surgeries have gone wrong. Sometimes it's the post-surgery, sometimes it's anesthesia, sometimes. I think uh, Kanye's mom passed away after one of these types of surgery. So women, can I say this? We love you the way you are. I know. You watch a lot of TikTok and you look at Instagram, you see these perfect bodies. Don't buy into it. I'm telling you, a lot of that stuff is not real and they're going to have some repercussions. I love you sisters just the way you are, really. And I'm sure many of the brothers out here feel the same way. And this is not a brother-sister thing. I mean, just say men and women, period. No, we're not born perfect. I mean, I could, I wish I had a few, I wish I had bigger muscles and a hairline that wasn't keep receding. And I mean, but I'm looking at it this way. I think when you, as you start to get older, let's say about 80% of you should be natural, maybe 20% augmentation. That means you got to put a little dye in your hair or put a little eyeliner on your face or. I mean, that's expected. That's normal. That's always been the case. But man, when you start cutting on your body, you got to think about 10, 20 years down the road, what's going to happen? That stuff start to sag, that silicone you put in, that stuff be bursting open inside your body. And this lady, uh, what's the name? Kay. I can't think of her name. Something Kay. She actually has a show now. She dedicates a whole show, but she had one of these BBLs and she had it taken out. But she now she tried to discourage other women from doing the same thing. K. Michelle, that's her name. You might want to check her out before you make that trip down to the DR. I'm just saying. Let's see. In Times Square, at a Dave and Buster's, a, a man was stabbed to death by a fight sparked over a game prize. So what happened, this guy was, he won a game at the... I guess, I don't know, you threw a basketball or a dart. You see, I mean, little thing you can get out of the bubblegum machine. He won a prize, so he goes to redeem his prize, which was like a, some little drone or something. He reaches up to grab the prize, and it fell down next to some guy's baby. It was too close to the baby, I guess, for his comfort. So that started a fight, and in the end, the person stabbed the other person. Now, if your fear was that the drone might hit you, your baby, which it did not, it came close, and you thought that would cause some, some type of uh, anxiety, imagine what stabbing somebody to death in front of the baby does. Now, which one do you think is worse? Almost getting hit by a toy or stabbing somebody to death? We're not thinking this thing through, ladies and gentlemen. That's a just so. Uh, that is just too tragic for, uh, that's just too bad. I'm sorry. That's, 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 that's a terrible story. That's a terrible story. Let's see. In, in New York City again, man, I should be thinking my lucky stars. I got out of there alive. An angry customer is being sought in the killing of a New York City Chinese food delivery worker over an ongoing dispute with the restaurant for not getting enough duck sauce. I must admit that duck sauce is pretty good. I mean, you got your 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 shrimp fried rice, and you all you all sitting down there ready to eat, and all of a sudden you see your duck sauce is missing or in short supply. I guess that no, it's not. There's no cause to stab anybody, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care if you didn't get any duck sauce or anything for that matter. If you didn't get your food, 
You're not thinking these things through because what I've been telling people always, let's forget about what might happen to you. What's going to happen to your family, your children, your co-workers, your boss, your fraternity, your sorority, your neighbors, they're going to have to deal with your poor decision-making skills. So I know some people say, well, look, I don't care what happened to me. I'm going to get revenge. You're not the only one that's going to be affected. Just know that. Sure, your child is going to see daddy going across the street, across the TV screen with a coat over his head, trying to hide from the camera. You had done that crazy deed, you wouldn't have to hide. Let's see what else is going on before we get to our sermon for today. A man arrested after shooting someone he wrongly believed was stealing groceries. Now, this is crazy. In Gig Harbor, Washington, a 70-year-old man was arrested. He saw a person leaving the store, which he thought was robbing them, I guess shoplifting. So he's going to be Mr. Citizen's arrest, pushes his cart into the person to prevent him from escaping. A fight ensues, and he ends up shooting the man. Come to find out the person was not stealing groceries. I know many, many people are saying people should intervene when some of these, when they see something going wrong, if somebody being attacked or if somebody's doing something wrong, society must step in. But boy, I tell you, if you are not a police officer and if you're not sure who's doing the crime or who's armed and who's not. I mean, I'll tell you, if I see somebody just being beat, let's say if I see a woman or somebody who's very small or just bullying or beating the snot out of somebody, I'm telling you, it's going to be hard for me not to do something. But I'm telling you, you got to weigh this, though. You got to wait. You, you, there could be consequences. I mean, I think the minimum you should do is call the police if you can somehow defuse the situation. But in this case, it wasn't even warranted. The person wasn't even stealing. Uh, I'm not even going to ask what, you know, the question, you, your first thing coming to your mind, was the person, what were their characteristics, their demographics? Mm. In Washington, D.C., all right, getting a little closer to home here, police, police are searching for a driver who's been picking up folks like they're, he's a ride chair. I guess that people think he's a Lyft or Uber. Folks jump in the car with him, and then he pulls out a gun and tells them to go down to the ATM and empty out their ATM account, their bank account. Well, I tell you one thing. Once again, I've been talking about these ride shares for seem like forever because it doesn't seem to be getting any better. But what the ride share companies are asking you to do, you should at least do this: check the app for the driver's license plate. Do that minimum thing. I know sometime at night, the person, that picture they took, they had dreadlocks and now they've gotten the cut off and it's like, are you Raheem? <laughs> so then sometimes that's not always accurate, but at the minimum, make sure the blasting tag is the same. And if, even if the photo doesn't match, you still can make that decision. Okay, you had a dreads over here or you had a bald head here and then you got a head full of hair. That might be one you might say, look, I'm good. I'm going to wait for somebody who has the same hairdo, at least. And when you call, get there, just call out their name. Make sure they answer to their name. I do that. I mean, I catch Uber. and I don't have a Lyft account, but I do catch Uber. And I will check that car every time. That tag, I was eight. Are you, are you Tyrone? I'm not getting in there. You don't look like that guy on that picture. And at night, too? Anyway, once again, these guys will get caught. Just, just know that. They will catch them. When they go to the ATM machine, they got cameras in there. There's cameras on every light post. You're not going to get away, ladies and gentlemen. What are they? What are we doing now? Is it the is it, is it school system failing us? Is it, uh, well, at least the school. What is it? What are we celebrating? Teachers Week? Maybe the teachers are going to be our savior. They're going to save us from this morass. Let's see the next story. A California teacher is arrested after she was accused of being drunk at work. 
All right, scratch that last statement. The 46 year old English teacher was currently on, she's on paid leave right now. She got to work and it was very noticeable that she was inebriated. And she's been charged now with child endangerment. Okay. All right, maybe that's just one example. Okay, one bad apple doesn't spoil the whole bunch. I'm sure the rest of the teachers are fine. Let's see, New York teacher arrested for allegedly choking 12 year old in the cafeteria. All right, let me keep moving here. Let me keep moving. Where are the principals, ladies and gentlemen? Do these schools have principals? Principals and vice principals? San Antonio Elementary School assistant principal accused of punching a five year old boy. Okay. All right, folks, where's my exit? <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Here's a mom that was accused of threatening to blow up the school because her child did not get enough portions in her lunch, in his lunch. These folks taking this school thing a little too serious, if you ask me. Between the parents, the teachers, the principals, I'm gonna tell you, boy, it's tough being a teacher. Once you taught some of these kids, <laughs> you might not punch them or choke them, but you can understand the sentiment. I must admit, and Lord forgive me for saying this, it did come across my mind a couple of times when I did this uh, summer school camp teaching kids how to write business plan. <laughs> I wasn't going to choke anybody or punch anybody, but you start to empathize with those who do, but you never sympathize or give them any type of pass for doing it because it's wrong 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 in every in every possible way an arby's manager snapped and poured hot grease on a customer at the drive-thru and the person obviously i guess expectedly has filed a civil lawsuit against the manager in arby's they got into an argument what folks thinking though? How do you think this is gonna end play out for you in the end? I mean, you gotta go get the grease. You gotta walk back to the window. Somewhere along that way, it should something should kick in and say, this may not be the best way to handle this problem. Now, of course, the victim has undergone several surgeries, according to the Alabama television station WBRC. Angry, girl, angry customer stabs girl working at Jimmy John's. She stabbed a 16 year old. Mom poses as UPS driver, shoots a woman she thinks shot her son. Once again, she was wrong. Vigilant, vigilantism rarely works. Here's two examples where the person thought they were taking action against somebody who had done something wrong. And in both cases of, of this vigilantism, they were wrong. This lady was grieving. She thought this person had something to do with the death of her son. She dresses up as a UPS driver, shows up at the person's door. When they open the door, she fired and shot the person. The person survived, thank goodness. But found out later on, it was the wrong person. Well, I tell you, there's nothing like losing a son or a daughter or anybody for that matter. And I can understand the grief can be overwhelming. But don't take this into your own hand. You're going to make the matters worse. Now you're going to be missing or in prison or may get shot yourself. And the people that you were trying to protect or memory you were trying to honor are going to be more be searched. Talk to somebody. Just talk to somebody. Talk to pastor, your counselor, your trusted friend. And try to get beyond it. I know I'm not going to minimize the the stress and the sadness and the sorrow. But this is not the way, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about franchising. Should you buy a franchise or should you just go ahead and do it the old fashioned way and start this business from scratch? Marketing Pulpit will be back in a moment. So don't go anywhere. You want to see this segment. Should you build your business from scratch? Or should you buy a franchise? We're going to talk about franchises in a moment. Mark and Pulpit, we'll be back in a second. <laughs> I'm not dizzy. I'm just in another era. Lock the refrigerator door. Do not let negativity have another bite. Don't feed it. 
if we know that women are carrying the burden, they should pay more, they should give them more flexible work hours. I may stop in some period, but as long as folks bag the food, gotta talk about it. All right, welcome back to the Marketing Pulpit Show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. We're not saving souls, we're saving businesses, saving jobs, saving our community. We're trying to build this uh, economic foundation in our community. And the best way to do that is through business ownership. Business ownership. And business ownership, you need to understand marketing. It's not a matter of if or why. It, you must understand marketing. If you plan to succeed in business, there's just no way around it. You don't have to be a marketing expert. There are people like myself. There are people like those shows like this. Well, you need to get to some information if you plan to succeed in business. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome all the mothers. Uh, this is the weekend leading into Mother's Day. I'd like to celebrate you and appreciate your sacrifice helping us everybody everybody i ever met or known had a mother can't get in this world it's gonna be hard at least <laughs> very difficult for me or anybody to sit here without having a mother of course they're all mothers are not created equally some have challenges some had uh privilege some women or were unable to bear children but they still have stepped in and helped out either by choice or circumstance. They were not able, but they still answered the call of motherhood and helped somebody else's child who either mother was overwhelmed, absent, or in some cases, just need a hand. Just need a hand. So thank you for all the mothers and all the people who filled the role of motherhood. Thank you. Let's talk about franchising. Now, franchising is, buying a franchise is not as simple as just, well, I have a money, I have some money here. I hit the lottery. I've been saving. Now I'm going to go out and buy me a franchise. There's some questions that need to be answered before we get to that point. One, why do you want a franchise versus starting a business from scratch? Many people have toyed with that question. Because they say, well, a franchise is going to cost me about $100,000. You're talking about you know, a good cleaning service, Mary Maid or something like that. Or if it's a restaurant, it could be a quarter of a million. Heaven forbid, one of these big, well-known restaurants like a Chick-fil-A or McDonald's could run into the millions. And you say, well, I can't do that. I'm going to start my own fast food restaurant. I'm going to start my own. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I'm going to say this right off the bat. Think long and hard before you start a restaurant of any cat type. I don't care how good you are. You got a special ingredient. You think you got some good barbecue wings or you make a good this or a good that, a good pie, a good cake, and you're going to start a restaurant. You want to give that some thought. And if you got a, a passion or a reason d'etre, a raison d'etre to be in the pie business or the wing business, you might think about a restaurant because, I mean, a franchise, because it's very difficult to survive as a restaurant starting from scratch. Now, I get it. Independence, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a champion of being independent and having your own. But that franchise you own is no less than your own. It just... I mean, you, you you buy the franchise and you put it under your company name. Let's say you have an LLC or a corporation. You buy the company and you're trading as that franchise. And so it's still technically yours to a degree. I mean, but when you think about it, do you own anything really? So let's not get into this whole ownership thing. Now, am I saying, am I encouraging or asking you to go out and buy a franchise? No. But I do want you to understand that there is a, there's a, um, there's some facts that you need to be aware of when it comes to making that decision, whether to buy a franchise or to start from scratch. Don't think because you're starting from scratch, you're going to save some money. <laughs> now, matter of fact, it may even cost you more. In a nutshell, a franchise compacts 
it shortened that curve from startup, critical mass, profitability, viability. When you start a business from scratch, you you by the time you reach profitability, viability, you probably have spent as much, if not more, than the person who just wrote a check for a franchise. The difference you just stretch yours out over a longer period of time, and depending on the industry you're in, you may not have that luxury because of something called obsolescence. It just may not by the time you're ready to think it, kick your feet up, feet up, <laughs> and relax, the thing may be obsolete. Nobody, the demand is gone. It has gone through the industry life cycle, and it's no longer in demand. So these are things that you can should consider when you're making when you're weighing these options on whether to buy a franchise or to start a business on your own. Now, the benefits of starting a franchise are, are many. Right up at the top of the list, something I talk about practically every show, and that's branding. The brand. Ask yourself, when you get ready to start the business that you're contemplating, how much resources, how many, how much money do you plan to invest in branding? And I can almost assure you that most people, the answer for most people is not enough because many people don't understand the importance and what a deal breaker branding can be. When you see those golden arches, you see that brown truck going down the road, you see those that, that cheesecake factory, you're going in there in many cases because of that brand. You didn't just want any cheesecake. You didn't just want any fast food burger. You wanted one that was felt you felt safe. You felt the quality was there. You understood the pricing. You made the decision based on the brand. You won't have that when you first start up with your company. You can get there, but it won't be automatic and it won't be immediate. Okay. Business development and marketing, right there together. Things like helping you find the right location, research, those kind of things come with a franchise that many small companies that are starting from scratch, they either can't afford or they don't have the knowledge, sometimes both. I'm not saying don't start from scratch. I'm just letting you know. These are some of the things that franchises bring to the table that either you're either going to do without or it's going to cost you some money. And you need to weigh that when you're trying to decide how you're going to make your mark in the business world. Experience. Now, many people, they start a company in an area where they have some experience. Now, that's the good news. But many people, they decide to go out and flex their muscles in a new area where they have little or no experience because somebody else is doing it. And they heard it was a hot new place to be. And they're not aware of the whole supply chain. They're not aware of the life cycles. And uh, they find themselves in a pickle after about a few months when they start this company. Well, the franchise helps in that area. Many people start a company and they don't have the funds. And you bootstrap it. You say, well, I'll take some of this money from my day job and I'll just feed it along. Well, some things in business you can't you can't do on a you know fifty dollars a week. You need an infusion of cash. Sometimes you buying equipment, hiring staff, uh, working on certain projects like in the government. You need funding. You need funds, and many franchises actually provide funding. Now, of course, you got to get approved, but that is an option on many franchises. Uh, you need a business plan. Once again, small companies many do not do a business plan. They just winging it. May get lucky, but unfortunately, the majority don't succeed because the plan wasn't there. They didn't see it. They didn't think it out. They didn't know where. It, they didn't lay out who the competition is, the, the staff, the product, break-even points, all these things, the projections. They did none of that when they started their company. And I'm not saying you can't succeed without a business plan, but it sure helps. And a franchise, once again, the business plan is built into the model. Training. Are you going to train yourself? Are you going to be trained as an expense? There's time. Once again, that's one of the benefits of a franchise. And like I said, folks, I'm not sitting here trying to sell you a franchise. I'm just letting you know that you're not necessarily getting over by doing it yourself and saving yourself some money. 
because a lot of these things that the franchise bring to the table, you should probably have also, or you should at least be working on it, or you might not get as much of it as they have, or to the degree that they have it, but you must, you should be familiar with everything I'm describing here that a franchise bring to the table. You should be aware of these things too. Uh, purchasing power is a big one. Uh, I was a buyer for a national food chain for many years. And one of the things that we learned was that called economies of scale. That means you, you the unit cost goes down when you buy in bigger volume. And if you're a little, you know, independent grocery store or have a mom and pop shop and you're trying to compete against somebody like a franchise, they're buying things by the truck load, by the train load, car lots, and you ride down to the to the warehouse, the little sub warehouse and picking up a case or two. Sometimes you'd be paying as much as 50% more on the unit cost. And so that purchasing power that franchises bring to the table, keep their costs down and competitive. And of course, then there's support in many other ways. So those are some of the benefits of a franchise. So if you're thinking about wondering why, why franchise versus doing it yourself, once again, I herald and, and celebrate anyone who's trying to start a company from scratch and but just know that you're going to be up against some some uh, some uh challenges and sometimes the franchise has already let's see tackled that challenge head on and uh but that doesn't mean that you can't start a business and even take your own company to a franchise and i've seen company do that where they had a great idea and it can be very costly to uh, take your, uh, your own idea and turn it into a franchise. So what many companies do, they have a great idea. They will bring in what we call an investor. And that investor might take, let's say, 35%. They say, look, give me 35% of this idea, and I will get you into franchise them. And once you become a franchise, man, whew, <laughs> it's raining money. I mean, you can average about twenty-five to $30,000, up to $50,000 just for selling one franchise and that just money goes straight to your pocket that's not talking about the money that franchise e has to pay to uh set the place up and rent the spot and get the equipment that franchise fee goes straight to the pocket of the franchise or the one that owns the franchise so let's talk about some franchise facts um first of all it's been touted that a franchise has about a 90 percent success rate i mean that's very of course that's our average uh you can't just de decide to get a franchise you have to qualify matter of fact when somebody gets a franchise they say you have been awarded I mean, that's how it's supposed to be like bells ring and they bring out the key to the city the governor I mean, the mayor comes to town and cuts the ribbon with you because it's a big deal and that's why everybody can't do it you have to qualify you have to have a certain network many of these big franchises they want you to have at least two hundred fifty thousand dollars in net worth and net worth is you're taking your assets uh, in your liabilities. If you have a house that's worth a million dollars and uh, you only owe 500000 on it, the difference, you have a net worth of $500,000. Um, and so you want to make sure you have the right net worth. Okay. Uh, so if you got cars and things like that, that's upside down on your house and all this kind of stuff, then it's going to hurt your net worth. You may not be able to buy a franchise. So, it, so you take your assets and subtract your liabilities, and that determines your net worth. You also have to be credit worthy. You need a good credit score in many cases. They want to have at least 50, 650, 700, 750 credit score for many of these franchises. So you just can't jump up one day and say, I hit the lottery, and I can go out here and buy me a franchise. It doesn't work that way. Uh, each franchise has what is called a franchise disclosure document. And that franchise is a long document that spells out the rules of that franchise. And you have to get that. If you don't get that, then you can't read about that franchise. Matter of fact, in most late in most states, you have to have that franchise disclosure document at least 14 days in your hand, in your possession, because you have to sign a, a piece of paper that says, I received it. That goes back to the franchise or that goes on file. And they can't take your money for that franchise until after 14 days that that franchise is closed. It's called the FDD has been in your possession. Um, all companies don't franchise. Every you go down the street, you say, "Well, everybody franchises." Well, that's not true. Certain companies do not franchise. Some companies, they're all of their uh, operations are company owned. Some have some company owned. Some have some franchise. 
and some don't franchise at all. Like a Dave and Buster's, you can't buy Dave and Buster's because all of their operations are company owned. Uh, there's a misconception that most franchises are food because fruit, that's the ones we see. Those are the ones that are most visible. But there are a lot of franchises that are not food related. Uh, there's tax preparation franchises, there's tutoring franchises, there's cleaning franchises. That's just a franchise, just about any type of business and industry. And so if you think about doing a franchise, it does not have to be a McDonald's or a Subway or a Chick-fil-A. It could be something else and more in line with where your strengths are because restaurants are hard. I mean, you really, I mean, I know the guy that owns the Chick-fil-A. Every now and then he still got the little chicken head on. So I was joking, but he's in the store a lot because that, that's, a, that's a tough business to be hands off. So you may pick a franchise that's more in line with your skill set. If you're a tax preparer, you could buy Jackson Hewitt franchise fries or Asian All Block franchise. So you might look at that as another option when you thought thinking about owning a franchise. Um, and the other thing to consider is that every franchise is not available in the territory where you live. Many people think, well, since so I'm going to buy a franchise, and I got, I'm going to buy me a Mary Maid or cleaning franchise. I'm going to clean all the houses right around this block. Well, there's about a 90% chance that that franchise, that that block in which you live is already in somebody else's territory. Somebody else already owns that territory. Because most of the good territories, they go fast. So it's a good possibility that you may have to drive out 15, 20, 30 miles from where you are to own a territory to get the type of franchise that you want. These are just things to consider. Uh, the cost of a franchise is broken down into several components. Uh, the franchise fee that goes straight to the pocket of the franchise owner. Now, when you get a franchise cost, they're going to have this going to have this cheap. It's going to say franchise fee. It's going to have another number underneath that that's going to say the cost of the franchise. And that's going to be money that you have to pay out of your pocket. And not always at one time. You may have to pay. It may include the cost of the location. Let's say if you're a trading, a trading franchise, like a traded, it may include the cost of that truck. And, have, and you also sometimes you'll see a range and the reason there's a range because some of these things you make it maybe even shop around or you may even own already. Let's say if you already have a traded truck, a truck that trades a documents and old computer hard drives. I mean, that's unlikely, but if you already have one, then of course your franchise will be less costly than somebody who doesn't have that. Uh, and like I said also earlier, some franchises do offer financing, but not all do. So some will offer in-house financing some will point you to a company that they may outsource this to somebody and some just don't offer it period they say look you better come here with your own money so those are some franchise facts now and last but not least there are there are different types of franchises most of us think about the single unit franchise where you go buy yourself a chick-fil-a that's called a single unit franchise you have one store and that's it but there are the, the big players the ballers <laughs> They do the multi-unit uh, franchises where they will actually buy several franchises and they may own a territory. And that means anybody in that territory, they would actually get a piece of that action. Uh, there's also uh, like, uh, let's see, there's also like area development franchises where you actually become part of the development process of the other franchises in your territory. And then there's a master franchise where you can actually own like a, a side of the country or so there are different levels of franchise. So when you see people like rappers and basketball players getting into the franchise business. In most cases, they're not coming in as a single franchise owner. They're coming in as like a territory owner, a master franchise, a multi-unit franchise, because once they decide to buy in, they say, why would I just buy one when I can actually get a little closer to the ownership? And they can actually start getting part of that franchise fee that I talked about earlier. So anyway, folks, that's the uh, story on franchise ownership. Uh, like anything, you want to talk to somebody. Uh, I'll be glad to give anybody a free consultation on franchise, uh, on how to own a franchise, what's involved. Uh, but talk to somebody before you make that decision. And yes, I am not saying that you need to go out and get a franchise versus starting up. But don't think that because you're starting from scratch, you're going to be saving money. You may save money in the short run, but you end up, you might end up paying more in the long run. Folks, that's going to wrap it up for today. This has been, thank you for tuning in to the Marketing Pulpit. We're at a different time today, but we will be back next uh, next Friday 
at our regular time. Uh, so if not, we'll at least have a uh, we'll have a show for you to watch. And if you want to be successful, ladies and gentlemen, you have to do these three things. I've been saying that for so many years. Do the right thing. Do it at the right time. But before I go, let me just say this again. Happy Mother's Day to everyone, all you mothers out there. And uh, thank you for everything you do. We appreciate you. We love you. And we'll see you next week. If you want to be successful, do these three things. Do the right thing. Do it at the right time. And you got to do it right. Enough talk. Let's get to work. People don't understand marketing. You can't stop here for time. The money runs out. You need to come on and tell people why your service is different. Why is everybody so angry? Airline passengers biting the TSA agents. I mean, it reminds me of one of those uh, zombie apocalyptic movies. And as a community, collectively, we're going to be taken more seriously if we have that strong economic foundation. Do the right thing. Do it at the right time. And you have to do it right. Enough talk. Let's get to work.